the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. That's a phrase that shows up in the Bible, some have said, 365 times, one for each day of the year. I haven't gone back and counted that, so I'm not sure if that's true or not. But it probably should be if it isn't, because it's something to remind us that fear is real and that helping to calm our fear is an important part of our faith. Now, in the Bible, when an angel or the Lord shows up and says, do not be afraid, it's usually because of one of two reasons. One is the hero in the story may be facing a, a uh, difficult foe, an obstacle, an enemy. And so the angel is there to help strengthen the hero to face what he needs to do. Or it could also be just the presence of the holy of the Lord or of one of the Lord's angels, and that evokes this response of fear because it is so other from who we are as humans. So fear is part of life, and that message is important. Do not be afraid. But let me tell you a personal story to help us have other perspectives on that. Uh, and it's about my wife, Lynn, and I got her permission to tell the story uh, because I found if I don't do that, I get in trouble. <laughs> but it was, gosh, over 30 years ago now, and I'd won a trip with my company, a sales trip to go to the Bahamas, which was fun, and we really hadn't been on a fancy trip before, and one of the perks of the trip was a horseback ride through the Bahamas, <laughs> and so we thought that would be great fun. And so Lynn was riding right in front of me, and I thought to myself, boy, she has really good posture. She was just like that. And then the guide came up alongside me and said, that woman up there is really afraid. I went, oh. And so as a good husband, I, I, do what, I did what I thought would be good. I said, Lynn, don't be afraid. <laughs> well, your laughter indicates how that went over. She said, don't tell me not to be afraid when I'm afraid. So saying don't be afraid doesn't always work. And it depends on the, the circumstances. It helps if you're an angel, I guess. But what it also meant, and what I unintentionally did, is it can, when you say that, make it sound like you're dismissing someone or their fear. Some of us see fear as a weakness or a moral flaw. And so because of that, you know, we're uncomfortable with fear and we try and you know, get over it, either for ourselves or in advising others. Fear also is just a natural part of being human. It's, it's not a bad thing necessarily in itself. It's part of our evolutionary development. So it releases hormones that give us that fight or flight response. So if we see a bear, being afraid is the right thing. So nothing wrong with that. And then fear is also like we said earlier that response to the holy, to God. So that is a, a typical religious response, what in the Bible is called the fear of the Lord. So again, all those examples, fear is something that we need to take seriously, to appreciate in some ways, and even when it may not be as uh, helpful, to still never stigmatize someone with fear, to be there for them. But fear can be debilitating. It can be something that really takes over our lives in a way that prevents us from doing things that we want to do or that the, the Lord might be calling us to do. And when that happens, it helps to know what to do in response. Part of our fear, when it becomes debilitating, might be due to an imbalance in our body chemistry. It's a medical issue that can cause things like anxiety it can cause uh, panic attacks, which you, if you've ever had those, you know that can be debilitating. It can be because of trauma in our lives or the PTSD that happens after the trauma. And so the thing that makes us afraid is no longer present, 
but it's in our memories in a way, it's in our hard wiring almost, where you can become fearful. And it can be due to some other more profound psychological issues, even more profound. So all those things are possibilities to cause fear. And then it can also just be the, what the prayer book calls the changes and chances of life, the things that happen where we might have lost a, a job and have financial issues, or it could be a, a, an illness that we are facing, our spouse might be facing, or other loved one. So those things make us fearful. It can be due to physical danger, the fear you face, a soldier in combat or a partner in a domestic violence situation. It could be a refugee or Lord help us. It can even be coming to a place of worship like what happened in New Zealand this past Friday, that those uh, places sometimes don't feel safe. So all those uh, are things where fear is part of our life and it can be debilitating. And we as the church just need to be aware of that. To be the folks who are open to those who are fearful. I know uh, Karina did something I thought very, uh, a good example of what I'm talking about yesterday. Our assistant youth minister went to a mosque, which was one of the things that Muslims had said, if you want to show us support, that would be a great thing to do. And I encourage all of us to consider that, to be there just to be present, to say, you know, we stand with you in this time of trauma and fear. But if we're the one that is afraid, if we're going through things that make us fearful, what do we do in, in that situation? And in my experience, both personally and pastorally, there's no one easy solution that you just do it and everything is fine. There's no magic pill. What is helpful, I find, is to go deeper to try to get to the source of where your fear is, and that's where Professional counselors can be helpful, a physician or a priest, but to try and identify what it is causing your fear. Is it something medical where you might need treatment of some type? And again, no stigma. That's something that you just need help with. Or if it is due to something around your uh, situation in life, what you're going through in any one moment, how do we uh, help ourselves and get help to get through that? Because there are ways that you can move forward. And in those situations, that word from the Lord, do not be afraid, is not going to be a dismissive message, but a sign of hope. That the Lord says, do not be afraid, that you can hold on to that with hope. Because the worst effect of fear is hopelessness, where you give up hope. And so there, there are practices you can do to help with that to connect with God more deeply and with the community. One thing that we can do is to pray on a regular basis, something like what we're trying to do on Mondays at noon here in the chapel or Wednesday evenings at seven, but a prayer with others often where you can sit still and be silent, to be calm. Because often when we're, we're fearful, we do pray. We pray from the heart and those are needed prayers but sometimes, and I don't want to be misunderstood, but they can almost reinforce that cycle of fear in a way that doesn't necessarily help to calm us. So to take time to pray, to be still, and to know uh, whatever we're going through, that we aren't going through it alone, that God is with us. But then also to connect with the community in some way, to find companions in this life's journey Again, as the prayer book says, someone who can just be with us, who doesn't try to fix us or to help us too intrusively, but is willing to be with us. So again, if that describes you today, know that you are in God's hands. And if you need to feel those hands more tangibly, what St. Teresa of Avila said is that Christ has no body now on earth but ours. No hands but ours. So again, as you connect with God more deeply, remember to connect with the church, to come here, to meet with your clergy. You have very good clergy here. Or to meet with others or people trained that are lay people, that are shepherds or Stephen's <coughs> ministers, but people who can, again, be with you when you're afraid so that you're not alone. And to 
The best people to find, if you can, are those who've been through what you're going through. That again, know how to be present without trying to fix. And that is the way to help us with our fear. And it may feel like this will never end, but God is with us. So as we move through this season of Lent, we do it together. And as we move through a season when we're afraid, we do that together with the Lord as well. Amen.